Some cars make sense. A small light two-seater will have lots of power and rear drive, for example. A saloon will either go super diesel or silky smooth petrol, have lots of space and be very comfortable. An SUV, though, well, that can be all number of things. The Range Rover Sport, for example, works wonderfully with a diesel engine. Some people would argue you don't need anything more, or there's a beautiful 500 horsepower supercharged V8. But Jaguar Land Rover's special vehicle ops didn't think either of those were really quite up to snuff, so it came up with this. The SVR, a 542 brake horsepower, 502 pound foot monster utility vehicle. SVO, Jaguar Land Rover's new company-approved Skunk Works, is there to churn out all manner of cars. SVR cars will be the performance motors, SVX is all about off-road prowess, and SV autobiography motors are for people who like a little bit more luxury in their lives. Cars with an SVR badge all have four main attributes. The four-wheel drive, they have better aero, less weight and more power. And because this is SVO's first full production car, it's something of a shop window for them. And the stats this thing has, well, they're pretty impressive. 0-62 takes 4.7 seconds and its top speed is over 160 miles an hour. That's quite fast, especially considering this thing tips the scales at 2.3 tonnes and its shape doesn't really lend itself to going mega quickly. But hey, that's engineering for you, right? Here's some of the particulars. The rear brakes have special carbon cooling plates, while the fronts are chilled by air intakes where the front fog lights live on the production car. Those intakes help cool the SVR's new engine. It's the same one you'll find in a Jag F-Type R, one of my favourite cars ever. But it needs more air to keep it from going bang. The spoiler on the car's rear isn't decorative either. It works to push the car through the air and aid downforce. Weight has been shaved off here and there too, all in order to make it a cut above the rest. Aside from being a technically tweaked tank, the new engine adds so much more to this car. I mean, the standard 5-litre supercharged Range Rover Sport sounds pretty good, quite raw and nasty. But this, this is something else. It sounds like an F-Type. It has that same tone that made me fall in love with the Jag. It pops and bangs and it sounds angry and mean and, well, like it's going to eat the world. Unlike the F-Type, in here, there's room for people. There's a few driving modes to play with, all of the usual Land Rover toys to ensure you can climb a mountain of an afternoon should you choose to. But you'll be spending most of your time in either normal or dynamic. Normal is this car's day-to-day, -day, dropping the kids off at school, going to work, going to football practice mode, and it makes it feel like a Range Rover Sport, which is a good thing, a wonderful thing, in fact. But dynamic, well, dynamic turns the wick up by a factor of a million. It completely transforms the car. The steering gets heavier, throttle response gets sharper, gearbox angrier, and everything becomes a lot more fun. gathers pace at quite, some, ooh, at quite some rate. This is a really, really heavy car. It's nearly two and a half tons, for God's sake, yet it doesn't feel like a heavy car. There's no effort involved here. You can thread it through bends, you know where the front wheels are, you know what the car's doing, you feel safe in its hands. The ride as well is fantastic. It's smooth. You don't feel nasty lumps and bumps in the road. The car just absorbs them, even in its sportiest setting. It's still smooth. It's still a joy to drive. It's still easy. You can sling it round a corner and yeah, it'll lean quite a bit. Not as much as a standard Range Rover Sport, I hasten to add. But it doesn't feel like it's going to fall over. It doesn't feel unstable. 
and you can really hand it around. You can hustle this thing at some quite silly speeds. The people at SVO, they aren't just people who are employed to put different bits on a car and see what sticks. They're proper engineers. These guys have come from the likes of Williams Formula One and places like that. They know how to make cars go very quickly. It's been their entire lives. So when I say this is the best possible example of a Range Rover Sport you're gonna get, this is the best possible example of a Range Rover Sport you're gonna get. The interior, most of it, is, well, it's, it's what you get in a Range Rover Sport. The materials are fantastic. The touch points are lovely. There is one exception that makes me a little bit hesitant about it, and that's the seats. I know they're there for a reason because this is the sporty car and they're sporty seats. But they are a bit tacky. Not a huge fan of those. And the infotainment system remains rubbish. It's hard to navigate, it's complicated, it's overly menued, and it looks very, very dated. But I know that JLR has a new one, because I've driven it in the Discovery Sport and the Jag XE. That works really well and is really lovely, so expect that to appear in these at some point in the future, presumably when they're facelifted. The gearbox is an 8-speed auto, and it's seamless, it's smooth, and it just, it just works, it works beautifully well. The look of the thing has been a touch polarising because it looks like a Range Rover Sport that's had some aftermarket stuff done to it. But I'll say this, nothing is on this car that shouldn't be there. There's a reason things look the way they do. So the fog lights were taken out so the giant engine could be cooled. And yeah, it looks a bit odd, but if that didn't happen, the engine wouldn't get the cooling it needed and then bad things would happen. And you don't want bad things to happen because when things go pop on a Range Rover, things tend to get quite expensive. Is it best than other stuff on the market? I'd certainly give it a look if I were you. I definitely, definitely would. Because it's hilarious fun. I don't know any other SUV that makes a noise quite like this. Big old dirty V8 slinging out anger and hatred on the road. I like it a lot. I like that it exists because it's proof that if you give some talented engineers time and the tools to work, they can create something that's faster than a Porsche, handles in a manner best described as unnatural, and still works as a car. I don't like something else about it though, and that's something that's no fault of the people who made it. There will be some people who won't fall under this sweeping generalisation, but there are certainly going to be a few who will. Are buyers going to understand just what went into making this car so brilliant? Will they get that this is the most impressive, the most advanced version of the Range Rover Sport you can get now? And will they understand why? Will they get the engineering that went into it? Will they appreciate it? Or will they simply see the most expensive car on the list and buy it just to show off? Not that there's anything wrong with being in the position to tick the box and buy the toy, but wouldn't it be nice if more people knew what went into their cars? Or maybe I'm being a bit of a curmudgeon. Buyers aside, the Range Rover Sport SVR seems like an answer to a question that didn't really need asking. Can the Range Rover Sport go any faster? The 500 horsepower V8 is quick enough. Hell, the diesel will do for most people. But because someone did dare to ask that question, we ended up with something pretty cool. It's a Range Rover, but with added anger. 